So this video is about uh, adding sine or cos functions, sinusoidal functions, uh, that have the same frequency, the same period, uh, but are in a different phase, you could say, okay, have a different phase shift. Okay, and if uh, before this topic you haven't seen this before, you might look at it, maybe it looks very easy. Uh, for this example here, does it just equal 5? Um, well, no, it does turn out that it is a lot more complicated than that, okay? It's not just five sine of something. Um, and somehow, complex numbers are going to help us answer this question, okay? How to combine these two sine expressions into one, okay? What we can do, even before doing it algebraically, is look at the graph. This is the graph of... Uh, the function on in the example and we can see that it is indeed a regular sinusoidal wave still okay and if there wasn't two x in both uh, expressions okay if they weren't in the same if they didn't have the same frequency uh, it would not look like this okay it would do some other crazy thing like this maybe it would still be periodic uh, it wouldn't be this nice wave that we're used to though. Okay, and we can see actually what the amplitude is going to be. Okay, and that gives us some clue about the phase shift of the final function. Um, but it may not always be possible to graph it. Maybe they'll ask the question in some other way. And even if you can graph it, um, figuring out what, uh, what C needs to be from there uh, is still not that easy. Okay, so let's look at this um, other method. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do, the big first trick here, is to consider this as the real or imaginary part of a polar form complex number. Now, as we know, something like this, 2 cheese 2x plus pi over 3, is literally just two times cos of this plus i sine of this. Okay, now what we could say is that uh, the expressions at the top are the imaginary parts of these complex numbers. Okay, and if we go ahead just saying uh, just start working with these complex numbers okay but just remembering that really we only are concerned with the imaginary parts of them okay then at the very end we can just isolate the imaginary parts again okay so we're going to cross into the complex number realm okay and use some of the techniques that we know to do with those and then we're going to switch back at the end. Okay, so this is the first step to say, to call that the imaginary part of these complex numbers, or these complex functions, polar form. Now, how can we add these? Uh, adding polar form complex numbers uh, isn't really particularly easy we can convert them to Cartesian form usually okay but these aren't just complex numbers these are complex functions okay with a with a 2x inside so even that isn't really particularly easy to do uh, so what we're going to do here instead is change it to Euler's form exponential form okay that would be this and similarly, this, as you should know already. Then what we start to see is uh, we can use some of our complex, uh, sorry, our exponent rules. Okay, our addition, multiplication. Okay, addition of exponents rule means I can split them and multiply. And I'm going to do the same thing in the other expression 
And the reason I do that is because now I see two uh, e to the power of 2xi in both parts. And that means I can factor out e to the power of 2xi from both. And the reason that that is helpful is because now inside the main bracket, I do have just complex numbers, just two polar form complex numbers. And because these have nice arguments, I could actually just do this manually, convert to Cartesian form and add. You will see some questions where these arguments are not sort of nice unit circle values. And this is where the calculator comes in. Okay, uh, this is A and I H L, and you always have your calculator. So you can just type into your calculator this part here, and it will add them for you. Okay, on a TI Inspire, for example, you would just write it like this. Make sure not to type I. You have to go on this little button here, uh, where where pi is and other constants like that and find the, the real complex i. That's slightly annoying. Um, now, depending on what setting your calculator is in, it, will, it may go to this. It may go straight to the uh, exponential form that you want. If it goes to Cartesian form, rectangular form, you can go on menu, uh, number, complex number tools, and convert to polar. Okay, And what you'll get is your polar, uh, sorry, your Euler's form of that addition. Uh, your calculator calls it polar. I think in IB we call, we have our three different forms. I think your, your TI Inspire kind of views Euler's form and polar form both as polar form. Okay, because they're both ones that use modulus and argument. Um, it doesn't really matter in the end. Okay, the main thing is our calculator has successfully added these two into one, okay, which is pretty much the main goal here, to combine all of these things into one. So that is surely going to be a helpful step. Okay, and we can use that exponent rule now in reverse. Okay, I've got two things that are e to the power of something. I can combine them into one by adding their exponents. Okay, that 4.84 will go out to the front. Okay, this will be added. I'll just do that to three significant figures. And now I have a single complex function. And again, I want to go back to just looking at these signs. So I'm going to take the imaginary part of this. And just to be clear, I could also write it in polar form with, with a cheese. Like this. If you need a reminding that it is just the sign part of this, the imaginary part. Okay, so the imaginary part of that and therefore f of x equals is uh, 4.84 sine 2x plus, I'm going to run out of space, 0 0.732. Okay, and we have combined them into one. I could graph that, and it would be perfectly o overlaying on top of this original graph. And you can see as well, sorry, the uh, 4.84 amplitude um, and if you divide our 0 0.732 by 2 you will see where this 0 0.366 comes from as well a shift to the left uh, of the sine function okay and that is how that is the general method for this um, and once you've done a few of them it does actually become quite a simple procedural type of question, one that you'll see in maybe somewhere in paper one or two most years, and uh, one where you can quite easily pick up seven or eight marks in the end. Uh, you will get the exact same thing with cos, and in that situation 
you might be able to tell that all you do is take the real part. Okay, you take real part of something, cheese, something, and go through the whole process, and at the end, just take the cos out of the uh, polar form complex number. The final thing is to consider uh, and have a go at a few voltage questions, okay, and other electronics type of questions, because these are ones where uh, it has a direct real-life application and one that's, I think, almost explicitly in the syllabus, and they may not completely spell it out to you that you need to just add this, uh, these sine and cos functions. It might phrase it more in terms of voltage, and you need to know a tiny bit about how that works. Um, it's not a huge leap, and once you've done a couple, uh, it will be very obvious what you need to do. Okay, hope that makes sense.